Hello. Oh, nice. I suppose that's my cue to start. Hello, welcome. Thank you everyone for joining. This is actually my very first time hosting a cosplay panel at a convention, so I am very excited. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, thank you. Okay, so let's get started. Today I will be talking about an introduction to cosplay makeup, what that means and how to do it. So let's get started with a little bit about who I am. To give you a little bit about, about of the background of where I'm coming from and whether I have any authority on the subject at all. So, I started cosplaying in 2015. I am a local cosplayer and I focus on mostly hair and makeup art. I have a lot of experience with digital and traditional arts. I have uh, you know, been the art club president for two years when I was in college and I have been a dancer and a musician. I'm currently a dancer. and. Uh, professionally trained actor. So, and my day job is in photography. So, just a little bit about myself. I am not a licensed makeup artist, however. I am a cosplayer. I do this for fun. So, you can feel free to take what I say today with a grain of salt or completely leave it at the door. That's entirely up to you. <laughs> I started, like I said, back in 2015 with very simple looks and it was a rough start. My wigs were not cut, I was not wearing the right clothes, my makeup was barely there, um, but I've come a long way. And cosplay has been a big impact in my life and being able to learn more about cosplay, about fandom, about being able to be a part of the community and making lifelong friends and really becoming more confident as well, doing something that I loved. So there's a lot that we're gonna be covering today. So here's a little bit of an overview to get you started. First, we're gonna talk about what cosplay is and what co cosplay makeup specifically is. We're gonna talk about researching your character so we can get them as accurately as possible. We're gonna prep your canvas. Skin care is probably the most important step. Then we're gonna talk about your undertones and color seasons, contour and foundation, getting into the basics. And then we're gonna get into the nitty gritty that we're gonna be learning about. So talking about changing your appearance to look more masculine or more feminine and even changing your appearance to look like a different age. Uh, then we're going to look at the iconic anime look going from your basic just woke up eye to a fantastical anime eye. Looking at lips, whether how to make them bigger or smaller and then polishing your look by making sure that it's photo ready and looking at characterization as well. Also. I believe I forgot to mention, she did mention it outside, I am going to be giving goodie bags out today. They are kind of a little starting kit with a lot of makeup in it to, you know, get you started. Um, and so you're going to be able to, you know, win these by answering some questions for me. So for a goodie bag, who can answer what is cosplay? Yes, please. Yes, exactly. Costume play. We'll give you a goodie bag at the end. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, thank you so much. Cosplay is costume play. And the reason why I want to discuss it is because it's very important to understand that at its heart, it's meant to be fun and stressful. Cosplay is one of the only things in many people's lives that isn't about making money or about, you know, impressing someone. It can really just be about self-expression and having fun. And I want you to keep that in mind as we go along today so that you don't get stressed about your look being perfect. It's mostly about having fun and making friends as well. Now for another goodie bag, who would like to answer what is cosplay makeup specifically? Anybody would want to take a stab at it? Yes, please. Yes, exactly. Thank you. I will give you a goodie bag as well. Uh, exactly. So cosplay makeup is the art of bringing a character to life. There's a lot of different kinds of makeup. We've got editorial, SFX, drag. There's natural makeup. There's movie makeup. But cosplay is one of the only kinds of makeup that is about looking like a character that already exists. 
So less about individuality or highlighting your own natural features, but becoming a two-dimensional character, a movie star. So that is something to keep in mind. Now, the very first thing you're going to want to do is research your character. You, just like many cosplayers, will look at a reference sheet to understand the little aspects of how you look at the outfit itself, the wig, the accessories, the shoes. So too, you can look at the makeup and the face. So what kind of eyebrows do they have? Do they have thinner eyebrows that are kind of like Nano over there? Do they have a big, red, pouty lip? Are they going to have facial scars like Edward Scissorhands? All these little different characteristics. Or maybe they're like one of the, you know, like The Last of Us which is a lot more realistic, and so they're going to have more texture on their face. They're going to have moles and sun damage, perhaps, on their skin. Knowing those things will help you bring your character to life all the more. Now, of course, the very first step is making sure that your canvas is ready and it's clean. I am not an esthetician. I am not a dermatologist. I'm not going to do, tell you exactly what to do with your own faces. However, it is important to have a good, clean base, and there are three things that I want you to keep in mind, if nothing else. First and foremost, I would ask you to wear sunscreen every day. Even if you're just in the car for five minutes going to work or to school, you can you know, still get sun damage. And over the course of many decades, that's going to wear you down. So make sure you wear sunscreen every single day. Make sure you wash your face every day. Hopefully, maybe once in the morning, once in the afternoon. And again, you can try and figure out what your skin type is, whether you have oily or combined or dry, but ultimately just making sure that you wash your face will help battle that acne and bacteria. And third, make sure you drink enough water. I know that we hear it a lot in conventions and in general health in general, but it's also actually very helpful towards your skin health. It's gonna help battle that acne and it's gonna rejuvenate your skin. So if you take nothing else, keep those three things in mind. Now for another goodie bag, who here can answer the question what are undertones? What is an undertone? Yes. Yes, thank you so much. I will give you a goodie bag at the end. Yes, you get a, you get a makeup goodie bag. So thank you. <laughs> um, exactly. There is your skin tone, and then there's your undertone. Your skin tone can change. It can change depending on the season. For example, you tan or you sunburn during the summer and maybe not as much during the winter when we're stuck indoors. Whereas with your undertone, your undertone always stays the same regardless of the season. How do you find your undertone? There are cool undertones and there are warm undertones. Maybe you don't know your own and this is a good start to think about. So feel free to take a photo if you'd like. There's a lot of information up there and if you don't Know about your undertones, it can be, certainly be helpful, especially when picking out your makeup, foundation, and making sure that you look brighter rather than washed out. But cool undertones generally will have under natural light, their veins will appear blue, whereas warm undertones, your veins appear green. I have a warm undertone, so my veins look green. <laughs> and there are many other ways that you can try and use that tip and tricks to find your undertone. Then there's the different seasons, and here's where we're going to get real, because we get to see my beautiful naked face. There I am, I look like an egg. You're welcome, all for you. So there are different seasons as well. And seasons, you know, they are the colors that go with a certain season and there are gonna be cool tones and there's gonna be warm tones. The cool tones wash me per personally out because I have warm undertones, but I look best in autumn. I actually got my colors matched professionally, but you can also use a lot of different kinds of techniques. And this happens to be the filter on TikTok. It says right there, it's armochromia. So, and, and I, I feel like that's what I look like. So, <laughs> so yeah, at least you can narrow it down to two. Why it matters, because well, how you can see over here, I have a cool undertone blush on my cheek and it kind of brings out my under eye. It looks more, tired and washed out. Whereas on the other side where I have more coral or orange blush, you can see I look brighter. And the only thing that I changed was the color of my cheek. I didn't put any foundation. I didn't change the background or the lighting. But 
you can really see a noticeable difference. So that's why it can help to know what your undertones are so you can better match your makeup so it looks good on you. Now we talk about foundation and contour. When it comes to foundation, less is more. That is especially you know, why it's helpful to, um, to clean your face and to be able to get started. Do you have a question? Yes. Great question. Yes, I love that idea. And absolutely. Later on, I will show you an example of how I did exactly that to be able to look more washed out and tired in a different look. But yes, you can try and use colors that don't go well for you if your goal is to look washed out. But when thinking about photography and maybe wanting to make your artwork look more polished, maybe you can also add a little bit of your own tone so that you still look good on camera. Um, but Again, cosplay and makeup is about looking and experimenting and having fun with it. So that is a really good idea, and I would certainly try doing that, yeah. But yes, less is more with foundation. So again, why it's good to have a clean canvas. That way you don't have to pack on as much to cover up color, acne, and such. Um, but there's also different reasons why you might have more or less coverage. If you like to have more coverage, you can absolutely do so. The cameras these days are really good, but they are still very forgiving when posting online. A lot of places will only post up to 1080p, so they won't capture every single pore on your face, which is great. So you can definitely go with more coverage. But if you're going to be walking around at a convention all day, I would personally go with a lighter coverage because after 10 hours, I'm just going to be heavy and I'm going to be heavy. It's going to sweat. It's going to crack. It's not going to be great. So for another goodie bag, what is contour? Anybody? Yes! Yes, exactly! Good one! Contouring is exactly that. It's about using shadows and highlights to change the shape of your face. You can contour, it's generally done to make your, your face appear slimmer or maybe more attractive on what is considered social media be beauty, but with cosplay, you can also use it to bring out, for example, a, sc a scar on your face for cosplay, or to make yourself look like a different character completely. Maybe think of Malefic Maleficent with very snatched cheeks. So yeah, there's a lot of things I would keep in mind when doing contouring. First, it's good to know what your face shape is. We all have, we all have very different, beautiful faces, and they all will contour in a different way. So if you're following a tutorial online, but it doesn't quite look like, it could be because that person doesn't have your face shape. So it's good to look at your face shape, your undertones, so that you can tailor your makeup to you. Make sure you blend. Even when doing a look that is dramatic or what have you, you want to kind of avoid looking streaky or like it was an accident that you didn't quite blend quite correctly. Yes. <laughs> Yes, there's a lot of different ways to contour, absolutely. Um, you can use foundation, you can use shadows, um, powders. There's many different ways that you can contour. But contour as, it, as its own idea is just the aspect of changing the shape of your face with shadows and highlights. Now, this is a beauty secret that many cosplayers use and sometimes even the beauty industry uses. Um, who can answer what face tape is? Yes! Yes, exactly! I will give you a goodie bag too. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely! It is tape that you can use to change and alter the appearance of your face. I have some. I use some. It's in here somewhere. I should have had it ready to go. Here we go. There it is. This is one kind that you can use. But essentially, like you can see, that third picture there is a cosplayer from Unique Soap. Um, you can use it to change and alter the appearance of your face so that you can become a different, fantastical character. Because again, these characters are larger than life. They are fictional and they have unrealistic beauty standards, whether they have very big muscles or very small Genshin Impact faces. So it's okay if we look human. 
but you can use these tips and tricks to be able to bring your art more to life. Now, I'm going to go into a little bit of a masterclass nitty gritty and how to get your face looking masculine. So, there is my egg face. And then here we start looking at how we can use contouring to change your appearance from perhaps a more feminine presenting face or perhaps you were born female and you can use these uh, tips and tricks to be able to look more masculine. So you can use contour to change the face to appear sharper and more masculine. Men in general to typically have thicker eyebrows and they tend to not work, focus so much on making sure that it's angular and perfectly defined. So you can definitely feel free to like make it a little bit more unruly and you can give more dimension to your face. When contouring, again, you could contour with foundation, with eyeshadow. You want to make sure to drag it into the corners of your eye so as to give it more of a depth. And again, that's my face. Your face might look different. The methods that you might use might be slightly different as well. But this is generally a good idea as to how you can change your face with just contouring, shadows, making your eyebrows thicker, maybe adding a five o'clock shadow or even some details of hair with using a brown eyeliner or liner. And those are some of the different things that you can do to make yourself look more masculine. That kind of looks like Leon Kennedy. I just kind of grabbed the wig, but you know, it was kind of giving a little bit. Cause a cosplay moment. These are some of the looks that I've done as male cosplays. And again, there is a lot of different ways to present feminine or masculine. That is just one of the more like Arthur Morgan or Captain Jack Sparrow, very masculine looks. But you can also be a more feminine character as well and still be a man. Then we also have feminine makeup. Feminine makeup, you can have a little bit more fun with color, go bigger and bolder, put more emphasis on the eyes and the lips to bring more life to them as well. So you can start by creating a softer, rounder face with foundation and contour. You can lose, use less contour than the ones that you might use for creating a masculine look. And depending on the age of the character, you can make the face appear more round or more angular, depending on the placement of the contour as well. Excuse me. <laughs> and then you can also use, for the lips, you can pack on the color. Whereas a man might not have as much color on their lips, for feminine looks, you're going to want to use more rosy tones or corals and shades. Same with the cheeks. You're going to bring more rosiness into your cheeks as well. And your eyebrows are going to be a lot more defined, more angular, more clean. And those are just some of the things that you can do. And if you were born male or masculine presenting and you have a five o'clock shadow, you can use color correctors to be able to change the colors of your face by using an orange tone uh, color corrector on the area that you have hair growth. You can combat the blue that is going to come through so that you can look more feminine. Now we can look at two diff three different looks. You can make yourself more youthful, you can make yourself more mature, and you can look like a very experienced older person just with the use of makeup. Makeup is incredible. So for a childlike look, if you're thinking about maybe doing a 10-year-old child or someone who's very youthful, you're going to want to bring a lot of their youthfulness into the, into the look. So you can start by almost foregoing contouring entirely to really bring out the rosiness and the cheeks and just don't focus on giving so much harsh angles, especially if you're thinking about fictional characters or two-dimensional characters. You're going to want to define your eyebrows to be a little bit bigger and bushier because children tend to have a lot more hair than we do as we age. And you're going to want to use youthful lighter colors, maybe light pinks or pastels. And uh, maybe go for a gloss or a lip tint when doing your lip so that it doesn't look too mature and not so much matte, for example. And those are some of the things that you can do for sure. And again, feel free to take photos. I'm not reading everything there. Then we can go for a more angular, femme fatale, think Jessica Rabbit kind of look. Contour can be used to emphasize a sharper jawline. We, use, uh, we lose our youthful baby fat as we grow older, so we're not going to be having such rounder faces. And again, this is about characterization about characters that exist in fiction, not necessarily in real life. And you are going to want to put more emphasis on muted colors rather than childlike colors and possibly go for a bigger, fuller lip in a matte tone and more, again, muted tones there. You can use a siren eye and a, um, 
more shadows in your eyelids to make them appear a little bit more sultry as well. And you're going to have thinner eyebrows that are more polished, like in Instagram, rather than a child. And you're going to want to focus on creating sharper shadows, smaller eyes, and bigger lips. And then you're going to have the Sophie Couture. Sophie from Howl's Moving Castle. I think somebody like that or more aged. So this is a very quick 20-minute example that I did. If I wanted to do a really, really good job, I'd probably spend more time on this look. But with just a few tools, just shadows and foundation and, and eyeshadow, I tried to show an example of how you can look at the features of your face to make yourself look more mature, more experienced. So you're going to want to emphasize aging lines with heavier contouring and adding aging spots and fine lines. You're going to want to create thinner lips. Perhaps you can pack on some foundation and then go from there and build up on it. Uh, you're going to want to take away color. So like you said earlier, using the colors that don't look good on your face. For this look, I actually ended up using blues and grays that are not, that are cool tones, so they don't look good on my skin, so as to make myself look more haggard, like I've been through things. And uh, I also made my lips look dry, so I didn't put on a glossy lip, I didn't use a lipstick to really emphasize myself looking a lot older than I am. And I, I made sure to scrunch up my face to see where my face creases and then I followed those as a guidance. But again, thinking about your character reference sheet from earlier, you would hopefully also have a bunch of different pictures of your character from different angles, maybe profile, maybe three-fourths view so that you can understand where their lines go. But this is just a random character I created to show how you can make yourself look older. I have never looked better. <laughs> Kids better get hot by long, yeah. <laughs> but you can see how I look a lot more exhausted and tired because I'm using cool tones that, that suck away the life of my face. And I'm not putting blush on my cheeks either. So that's one example. I look, I look great. Ugh, there we go. Now we're going to talk about the iconic anime eye. It's a really stark difference going from you just woke up to looking like a Genshin Impact character or Bratz doll or any kind of fantastical character. So I'm going to break it down for you. You start off with your naked eye and then I would recommend when looking at contacts to go for something that makes your eye look larger. You can use different kind of contacts. There are contacts that are going to be larger than your natural diameter. There are also contacts that have a black rim, like the one that I have here. Those will be characteristics that make my eye look bigger. Then you're going to want to go in with a white eyeliner under your eye so as to bring out the white of your eyes and make it appear larger as well. After that, uh, you can also try the Korean eye sal. I'm not sure if I said that right, which is where you try and make the appearance of the little fat under your eye look bigger by using highlighting and contouring the same that you might in other areas of your face. That also makes your eye appear larger. And then you're going to go in with your eyeliner. There's a lot of different kinds of eyeliners that you can use, but I use black uh, liquid eyeliner, and I have created the illusion of bigger under um, lashes. And a, I, I went higher on the middle of my eye to make my eye big, appear bigger, and then I went out towards following the natural line of my waterline. And then at the end, of course, I have a very doll looking eyelash. There's a lot of different lashes, but I like these in particular when trying to look like two-dimensional characters or feminine characters like today. These are the same ones. And yes. Good question. This is one way to do the anime eye. These are some good starting points, but again, with cosplay and with makeup, you can practice and you know, see your individuality. So one way would, do, would, would be to go on your waterline. You can, of course, take it even further and go for an even bigger, bolder look, depending on the effect that you're going for. For example, a brat stall is iconically known for the big, bold eyes. And I've seen drag, think of Trixie Mattel, who goes for the big, bold eyes using a lot of different techniques. So go from there. Now we look at how to make your uh, lips look bigger. So I called it the Jessica Rabbit, but I didn't really reference her when doing this lip. I just wanted to show an example of how you can make your lips appear larger than they are. So you're going to want to start by overlining your lip with a lip liner. Make sure that when doing so, 
you stay to the center and go close into the corners of your lips so that you're not going above and beyond the natural lip line. Otherwise, you might end up just looking kind of clownish. And unless that is your, your goal, that's not going to end up looking very good if this is what you want it to look like. So make sure that you meet the corner of your lips, but you can go bigger in the center, on the top and on the bottom. You're going to be able to go a little bit further with the bottom lip because I'm not sure what this is called. I forgot, but this little part of your lip that kind of hangs over, you can fill that part in and it'll look a lot more bigger and bolder. And finally, I would recommend personally going with a matte lip so that it looks more two-dimensional rather than three-dimensional because you want to try and hide the appearance of the fact that you have overlined your lips. And I would go in with a foundation brush or a flat brush like here with foundation and clean up the corners of your lips so that's to make sure that everything is symmetrical. And that is one way to do a bigger, bolder lip, but you can also go smaller if you want to go really itty bitty for however many reasons. One example is the Queen of Hearts. So what I have done here, the method that I have used is to put foundation on the corners of my lips. Make sure to really pat it in there to try and get a color as out as much as possible. And then you want to go in with a lip liner and then use your lipstick, making sure that you kind of line out where you want your lips to go. Since we're going to be going in smaller where your lips don't usually exist, they, you're going to want to make sure that you're staying symmetrical. So go back, build on it, and really try and see where it's going to go. And then finally, pack on that look and make sure to use a translucent powder to be able to set the foundation around your lips. Yeah. Putting your brush to canvas. Now you know the basics of a wide array of things you can do with makeup. But now I want you to take your character and the 300 reference images that you've gathered and start mapping out your work. The most important thing is to keep practicing. You know, the first try is probably not going to be the best one. So the more that you do it, the more confident you're going to be able to feel doing the makeup that you're going to do, as well as that specific character. Then, you know, try different things and see what sticks. Perhaps your character happens to have certain features, but maybe they don't look good on you, or maybe you don't feel confident in those looks. To change it to make it shape your face. And again, you can always interpret something in your own unique way. That's the most exciting, fun aspect of cosplay after all, is bringing your own individuality to something. I've, we've all seen 20 Tanjiros at a convention, but the most exciting aspect is when I see a tall Tanjiro, or a modern Tanjiro, or steampunk Tanjiro. So make it your own and have fun. Beyond that, I want to just take a moment to make sure that you know how to pose and light everything. And, um, you know, you finished your work and your makeup, took two hours, and it's perfect down to the lash, but now you want to make sure you take your, your photos and you're able to, it looks good on camera. So make sure you have a non-distracting background, preferably simply white is key when shooting from home, and lighting is important. You want to make sure you think about what lighting you have. Again, your cool tones, your warm tones, if you have cool tones, maybe cool lighting will look better on you. Um, and posing your face, you know, I, I would go, this is a whole other panel that you could do about posing and lighting and photography as well, but just trying to think about that as well. Because if you end up taking a photo in your room and it's dark and you can hardly see all of your hard work, it's going to be for nothing. So make sure you try and think about those things as you go through. And characterization is kind of another really important aspect that isn't necessarily about makeup, but it can really bring your character to life. These are all my face, but with just a few different changes, I look like completely different characters by bringing out their personality. So I do research on the character, how they act and what they do, and try to emulate their personalities so that I can really bring out the crazy and the Harley Quinn or the youthful Disney princess or Cybiok from Squid Game who is trying not to die. So. <laughs> And so that's definitely something to keep in mind. For example, you know, Fluttershy is shy. So you're going to want to pose yourself in a smaller way, whereas Wonder Woman is not. Maybe you don't feel very confident, but try and emulate Wonder Woman when posing like her, and then you'll feel a bit more confident as well. That's it. Thank you so much for being here. Any questions? I would love to answer any questions you might have. I don't know how much time we have. No, I still don't know how much time. I don't know when it was supposed to end.
<laughs> but yeah, do you have any questions for me? Anything that I could expand on? Anything that you've struggled with in cosplay or makeup? I'll give you a goodie bag. <laughs> yes! Yes! Great question. Thank you so much for asking. And I will give you a goodie bag. Um, so yes, yeah, so I would definitely recommend starting out at your local makeup drugstore. You don't have to go to Sephora or Ulta or some other big name brand makeup to be able to buy all your makeup. Your first foundation shouldn't have to be $50, which is often $50. And you know, you, you can use a lot of, I don't want to drop name brands or anything because I'm not affiliated or anything like that, but you know, a lot of drugstore makeup tends to be very good, if not just as good, very similar um, formulas. So start there and then work from there and do your research. But yeah, you can really get like a whole set of makeup. All of these, a lot of these things that I have are drugstore makeup that it was very, very cost efficient. So to get you started. Yeah. Thank you for asking. Yes. Mm, good question. That's a good one. So I have my own makeup products that I like to use because they make me feel more confident. Sometimes someone swears by their mascara. Sometimes someone says, if I have my lip, then I'm good to go for the day. For the day. But with regards to a universal advice for cosplay, I would recommend, let me see if I can find it sooner rather than later. Oh, God. You know, and this is also helpful. Well, it's in here somewhere, or maybe I left it at home. Oh, actually, there it is. Yay, Barbie. <laughs> so this is a matte magic mist and set. Set your makeup. Set your makeup, especially when going to conventions. You're going to be walking around all day. It might be hot. You will be eating. You'll be laughing. You'll be talking all day long. Set your makeup with a, a mist setting sp uh, spray and translucent powder. Do the powder first. Do the powder first. But yes, after you're done with all of your makeup, everything's on your face, put translucent powder, and then there are a lot of different methods on how you can do it. Uh, really depends on what kind of finish you want to have. Maybe you want it to really be packed on there. Maybe you just want to lightly set it. So it really depends on how much you're going to put on there and how long you're going to let it bake or sit on your face and use the natural heat of your face to stay on there and then you want to go in with a finishing spray so that it all stays there. So that would be my advice. Thank you for asking. Yes. What does the powder do? Good question. The translucent powder. So translucent powder helps to set your face. When you have a lot of liquid, for example, foundation or other liquid things that you might have on your face, it might move around. But Translucent powder kind of sets it on your face. It's the same that you might have in art class when using uh, the setting stuff. I can't remember. English is not my first language, by the way. <laughs> um, yeah, but essentially it's going to help to set everything in place and it's not going to let it move. It's also why it's important that the moment you put your translucent powder or your, your powder at the end of the, of the makeup look, you don't go back in and try to build on it with foundation or anything liquid because it's going to end up looking cakey, it's going to drag, it's going gonna, it's gonna to crack, and it's not going to look good. So make sure that that's the very last step of your look. It's okay to learn as you go through. That these are mistakes we've all probably made at some point or another. But yes, good question. Thank you again so much for being here and for being a part of my panel. And, um, and I'll give you goodie bags. Yeah. <laughs>